During nearly 20 years of Western military presence in Afghanistan, women gained new freedoms, including playing sport. 5,000 women and girls chose to play football, some for clubs, others for their country too. But in 2021, US President Joe Biden announced US forces would be leaving and within weeks, Taliban forces had reached the capital. In Kabul airport, there was panic and a scramble to leave the country. Life for women in particular was about to drastically change. It was understandable that so many wanted to leave by any means necessary. Women who played sports such as football felt particularly at risk that they would be punished for playing a game that the Taliban viewed as un-Islamic. <laughs> Plans were hurriedly drawn up to evacuate women who had a high profile in football. Some went to Australia, some to Portugal, others to Albania. Soon after, the airport route was closed, but another way out was found for 130 people, footballers and their families, via Pakistan to the UK. BBC Newsnight has learned that there are still national female footballers left behind in Afghanistan who tell us they are desperate to reach safety and are in hiding. We used to serve our country. We served our country for sport. People who had no affiliation with football left, but we are here. We cannot do anything. I can't even go out without my husband. We are like slaves. They took away our rights. The story of the group's escape to Britain began in late summer 2021. And it could have been the plot of a tense Hollywood thriller. They faced harsh conditions and danger at checkpoints as they went overland by bus to cross into Pakistan. But the footballers were only given temporary visas to stay in Lahore. And the race was on to find a safe third country who would take them. Following a lobbying campaign over weeks, Press reports at the time claimed that the then Home Secretary, Priti Patel, was ready to act. The evacuees and their families were given visas and the right to settle in the UK. Newsnights obtained the final list of names of the description and details of the evacuated footballers and their families, which were submitted to the British authorities, that allowed them entry into the UK. For each of the principal applicants, that's the players themselves, their role is listed often as a national player in the junior or senior team, and most are listed as from the Herat province in Afghanistan. And while the identities are genuine, real names, passport numbers and birth dates, some of the designations, for example, as national level players, appear to be false. The person with an expert knowledge of the women's game is Arazu Rahimi, a former national player herself, and crucially, head of the Women's Committee at the Afghan Football Federation from 2019 to 2021, when Kabul fell to the Taliban. Before the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, we were receiving threats. Our officials from the Women's Committee in the provinces were warned that the committee head was on the list of the people who would be executed. They were told that Islam does not allow women to play football. They said, you are bringing Christianity in through football. Once in Samangon province, they tried to plant a bomb in our car. We were going there to train female coaches. Even before the Taliban takeover, girls were playing football in a very difficult situation. Arazu says she would know all the female national players in Afghanistan, but she only recognizes one person as a national player on the list. On the list, all of them were described as national team players. Among them, only one person from Kabul was previously a member of the national team. Afghanistan had around 5,000 players. I can't recognize all of them. However, I do recognize the selected team of a province and all the members of national team. 
Now, there's one woman on this list that's been described as a senior women's national team player and campaigner for Football Federation of Afghanistan, a coach. Is any of this true? She no. Can you tell me if this person has ever done any of these roles? No. <laughs> There is resentment among genuine players now living under Taliban rule in Afghanistan. The others got out apparently pretending to play for teams they did not. I spoke to Aisha and Sara, not their real names, and their words are voiced by actors. We have independently checked videos and pictures of them playing football, including documentation that they were part of the Afghan Football Federation. Afghan sports officials confirmed them as genuine players and we used facial recognition software to ensure that their football pictures match their official IDs. It's like a living hell. It just makes me feel very neglected and very sad because we are the real players and not some of those that got evacuated. Please help. We are real sport people. Look at me. I was free. I was a free woman. Look at my chadari, my veil. I can't even walk with this veil. I cannot. Look at me, women around the world. I'm a woman like you. Fatima Hadiri is a genuine former Afghan national footballer and a former player with the Herat provincial women's team. She was one of the lucky ones who managed to get out before the Kabul airport route was closed. Both she and her former coach in Herat found refuge and a new club in Italy. In Afghanistan, we were not allowed to play or train. No one is playing anymore, not any sport, not only football, because there is like a threat. Yes, it's dangerous. Many of the evacuees who came to the UK 14 months ago were described as being members of the Hirat youth team, Fatima's old club, where Najibullah Naruzi was the coach. Every girl in the federation from Herat was training with us. I supervised all the matches. I organized football matches for them. And I was also supervising the selection of the players. I know all the girls from Herat who were in the team. Can you tell us what you know about the UK footballers who were evacuated? It annoyed me a lot because people who were eligible to come, they were denied. I told you, they were playing in a very difficult atmosphere. Even their own brothers and fathers were criticizing them. Even among those who have been left behind are people who were stabbed by their brothers for playing football. When I saw the list of people who were evacuated with the title player or coach, I wondered if they've ever visited the Herat football ground even once in their lives, let alone playing for the national team. I've seen people in the list who've not even worn a football strip in Herat. I do not know how and who evacuated them as Herati girls. There should be accountability. The captain of the team that Najibullah Naruzi coached was Sabria Naruzi, who was part of the UK evacuation along with her teammates. They all continue to play in England. Sabria currently plays for a league team in Yorkshire. She first met some of the women in Pakistan. They are said, Mr. Naruzi, our coach. We are playing the uh, Herat Federation. If ask question more they are didn't know about about the football so do you think they were lying about being footballers yes they also couldn't do uh, exercise with our team and i organized uh, two team uh, because uh, one team is uh, couldn't play football one team is uh, professional football our team I'm really confused about this, Sabria. Either they can play football or they can't play football. Uh, they all can play football. Okay. Yeah. Uh, team B couldn't play football. No, can't play, play football. Being taken to Canada. 
The doubts are now shared by the woman who ran the charity involved in the evacuation. She claims some of the genuine players evacuated raised the alarm with her soon after they arrived in the UK. On the list that we put together for the Home Office for British visas, they were under the list of Afghan youth football, footballers. So the British government, you know, helped, their criteria was that they will allow entry into the UK, give them visas because these people were footballers. Yes, yes indeed. A key figure in the rescue mission was Afghan women's soccer icon, Khalida Papal, who got involved at the early stages of the evacuation. Khalida Papal runs a non-profit organization called Girl Power, which wants to help empower women through sport. She tweeted her delight at the women and their families' arrival, finally in the UK, declaring, mission accomplished. She was telling us who was a footballer and what their position was. Khalida Papal personally had been in including more names and more names and more names. We did all the checks we could. We multiple times asked Khalida, did you check that these are footballers? She said, yes, they're definitely footballers. I would know. I would know more than you, even at one point. She said, I would know more than you because you're not a footballer, Sue Ann. I'm a footballer. These are my girls. I know them. We asked Khalida Papal for an interview. She declined. So we wrote to Miss Papal, about the allegation that non-footballers had been added to the list that had been sent to the Home Office. It is clear that the relationship between the Rocket Foundation and Khaled the Papal broke down during the evacuees' time in Pakistan. And Ms Papal told us that the Rocket Foundation had also removed and added others to the list. Rocket accept that they added one non-footballer who played another sport, that this was agreed between them and Ms Papal. In a statement to the BBC, Ms. Papal said, I categorically denied the allegations directed at me. I have repeatedly provided extensive evidence and explanations about why any suggestion that I had any formal role in verification and or knowingly misled anyone about the identities of those evacuated is wrong. The women's arrival in England attracted worldwide publicity but following newspaper reports questioning the legitimacy of the evacuee status, Khalida Papal sent some of the women a message urging them to stay silent. Girls, don't worry. The government will not deport you. Deportation is not that easy. Even if the government wants to launch an investigation, the government itself will be questioned. Please do not share the details of the team with anyone. The main question is why girls share the details. You are damaging us. I know some of you are friends with the girls in the national team, but don't tell them anything. The British Home Office issued visas to the evacuees based on the list that was submitted to them. But why didn't they ask questions? Did the Home Office not do any checks? Did they not ask you, Rocket, or Miss Papal for verification that these people had a connection to football or were footballers? The list that was prepared that we gave that was verified by Khalida, already stated they were footballers. Therefore, the Home Office did not believe they needed to cross-check. So the Home Office relied on one person's word? Yes, indeed, yeah. Ms Papal denied that she was responsible for verifying evacuees' credentials. The ex-head of the Rocket Foundation told us the then Home Secretary Priti Patel was directly involved. We also asked her for an interview or a response, but none was forthcoming. We put our evidence to the British Home Office, and this is what a government spokesperson told Newsnight. Their love of football put these women and girls at risk from the Taliban. We are proud that members of the Afghan Girls Development Squad and their family members were brought to safety in the UK. We worked with a number of organisations who identified and referred the group to us, undertaking security checks as part of the process. Should there be evidence that the information provided was incorrect, the Home Office will investigate. When researching this story, we spoke to a number of sources who told us who are and who are not members of the teams listed. We have also seen WhatsApp messages between the evacuees which question whether some of the refugees had any knowledge of football. 
for the former Herat coach is simply a question of fairness. Why did these others benefit from this opportunity? I only want the players and coaches to be helped. They worked hard. But now we see people are using their titles to go abroad. We try to put the allegations to those who our sources told us were not genuine footballers. Only three responded, and they all insisted they were genuine, and two of the women said they had been wrongly described on the list. Given the Taliban's widely reported attacks on women's rights, it is hardly surprising that so many want to leave, regardless of who they are. But the stakes are higher for those who were involved in sport. Many are asking why I'm left behind, as I'm a real footballer. I'm living in hiding, and I can't live freely. I don't want to stay alive. I want to die. I'm only alive for my child. For Najibullah and Fatima and the other players who managed to leave Afghanistan, the world is still free to learn, work and play their beloved football without being penalized. For those still living under the Taliban government, the rules of the game are now very different.